In this video, I want to talk about the importance of ensuring that you start off your Markov chains at fairly dispersed locations in parameter space. And I'm going to do so by means of an analogy that I've used before. But first, I want to talk about exactly what I mean by starting off your Markov chains. Well, the idea with any MCMC -MC algorithm is that before you start doing dependent sampling, you're required to draw some value of theta to start at. And typically we use some sort of arbitrary distribution to do so. To ensure that you don't have an upwardly biased measure of convergence as signified by, say, r hat, it is important that you start your chains off in widely dispersed locations in parameter space. Just how to determine exactly what is meant by widely dispersed locations in parameter space is difficult. But in practice, what you should do is you should use as wider starting values as you think are feasible, really, and perhaps even go a little bit further than that. I'm now going to use an analogy to explain the importance of this in more detail. So this analogy comes from a lecture that I saw by Bob Carpenter, but the idea behind what I'm talking about really comes from Gelman and Rubin's paper in 1992, which you can find a link to beneath the video. And the idea behind this analogy is that there exists some house of unknown shape and we would like to determine its shape. But unfortunately, we cannot go in the house, we don't have any pictures of the house, and so we need to find another way. Fortunately, what we do have is a collection of bees. And on each of these bees, there is a GPS locator. And so what we can do is, fortunately, we are able to introduce these bees into the house, and then they move uniformly at random throughout the house. And by monitoring their path over time, we hope then to be able to figure out what the blueprints of the house look like. We spoke about in the previous video the importance of using multiple bees. In other words, in our MCMC algorithms, ensuring that we use multiple Markov chains. And what I'm talking about in this video is the importance of introducing our bees into different parts of the house to begin with. And similarly, by the analogy, the importance of starting off each of our Markov chains at widely dispersed locations in parameter space. So I now want to use some simulations in Mathematica with a house of odd dimensions that I've created to illustrate this point. So imagine now that we're starting off each of our bees in the same location. So we start off each of our bees in the same location and we think that after we've run our bees for a given period of time that we've actually converged on the shape of the house and the house corresponds to this kind of square room that I've shown here. However, what does the actual shape of the house look like? Well, I've created quite an odd house and it looks something like this. So now when we start the bees off in the same location, we can see why they aren't moving to other parts of the house because actually there's a very narrow gap separating this room from the rest of the house. And so it's probabilistically very a very low probability that bees will actually move through this gap. And so even though we've run our bees for, I think, 400 iterations now, it looks like we've converged on the shape of the house when in fact we haven't. Now what I want to do is to show you the results if instead we started off our bees in different locations in the house. And so when we start following our bees now, it's abundantly clear that we haven't actually traced out the shape of the full house because of the fact that the paths of the bees aren't overlapping with one another. And so we can clearly see that there is more of the house which is left to explore. That is, of course, always assuming that we can get to every area of the house, at least via some small gap. And that corresponds to the assumption underpinning MCMC that we have irreducible Markov chains. That just means that we can always get to one area of parameter space via some means, however low the probability of getting there actually is. Now, just for a bit of fun, I want to show you what happens if we follow these bees that we start off in dispersed locations over time. So if we follow them for a reasonable amount of time, what you'll see is that the paths of the bees start to overlap entirely with one another. And actually what we should do really is we should wait until the paths all become the same color because then all the paths have mixed well with one another but here you can see that after we run the bees for, I think, 50,000 or 20,000 time steps here, the paths actually start to converge on the outline of the true house. So in summary, it is very important that you start off your Markov chains in dispersed locations in parameter space. I really want to advocate against what some people suggest you do, 
which is to start the positions of the Markov chains at a mode in parameter space. If you do so, it is very easy to be misled into thinking that you've actually converged on the posterior distribution when in fact you haven't. You may not have visited those areas of parameter space which are hard to get to from that mode. For example, if you have a highly multimodal posterior, it may be of extremely small probability that you transition from one of the modes to another one of the modes. And so by looking at your chains that have all started at the same mode, you may be misled into thinking that is actually the shape of the posterior density. In other words, that's where the majority of posterior mass is contained within. So what you should do is you should start your chains in quite widely dispersed locations in parameter space, probably wider than you expect the majority of the probability mass to be contained within, just to make sure that you're not missing some mode of the distribution that you should be exploring with your Markov chains.